is Mr. Kazim Afebwa, uh, a member of the um, Communication of the Presidential Campaign Council and uh, former Commissioner for Information in Edo State. Uh, Kazim, a fine morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity right. once again. Indeed. Well, <laughs> always our pleasure. Okay. Uh, well, today we want to look at, um, uh, shall we call it the, uh, well, the contest. <laughs> the contest for uh, Senate presidency. Although the way my producers uh, frame it uh, dramatically is uh, the battle for uh, the Senate presidency. Um, first of all, would you consider it a battle, first of all, by way of commentary or a contest? <laughs> well, uh, I, don't, I don't think it's a battle. Uh, democracy is a very lovely uh, indulgence, very, very attractive. If only we follow the processes, if only we allow people to have their say and some other have their way. So I, they will call it a battle in the context of Nigeria because <laughs> everything that is worth contesting for in Nigeria, people will always see it as a battle. Yeah. But it's actually a very lovely indulgence that has to do with lobbying. Lobbying. You have to lobby people. You have to woo people. Not necessarily go into a battlefront like they want to put it. <laughs> Indeed. And, um, well, the news is that um, uh, seven senators elect from five geopolitical zones are indeed vying for the exalted office of chairman of the National Assembly, which is an alternative office uh, by which the Senate president is, uh, is called. Now, all of, well, first of all, the contest is open, of course, only to uh, members of the uh, ruling APC, uh, right? And um, one, first of all, how is it going to go? What I, what I mean by that is that um, there are a number of standards. First of all, there's the matter of ranking. Uh, how many times you've been re-elected, that I think is uh, top of the pecking order. Uh, then there are also some other criteria. I think uh, uh, whether a person, first of all, served in the House of Representatives, that will also determine his place in the queue. And then, of course, there are the, you know, uh, uh, senatites. I'm trying to find... Uh, Something to rhyme with jambites. <laughs> There's no such thing in the National Assembly, of course. A senator is a distinguished senator. So this, this, this is the pecking order. But, um, and of course, the incumbent Senate president is also uh, in the race. He would like uh, for his colleagues to uh, elect him. But it all depends on the party, isn't it? It depends on how this thing is zoned. How complex an operational matter do you think that is going to be, uh, Kazim? This, this whole matter about how the party zones, because there are going to be all sorts of calculations. Uh, uh, since I was saying that um, uh, seven senators elect from five geopolitical zones, I, I imagine that they're going to begin to look at um, how many votes came in from you know, each zone that would then determine uh, you know, the pecking order for these uh, contestants. How do you see it, Kaya Kazim? Well, uh, the 10th Assembly that we envisage is one that we robustly engage with the executive without being perceived as a rubber stamp assembly. Uh, don't forget that the president-elect is one man who understands the dynamics of politics, who understands the etiquette of maintaining separation of powers, who also is very engaging, an engaging personality who always loves the resource of dialogue and constructive engagement, you know, to attend to issues of national importance. So they are going to be having a president uh, that understands the rubrics, you know, of the legislature, having been a senator himself. So that's the perspective from which we should look at that. That's first. Secondly, we are going to be looking at geopolitical balancing. And I have repeatedly that the South-South zone must be given the opportunity you know, to, uh, uh, to, to, to assume the position of Senate presidency. 
for a number of reasons. One, it is the resource base of the country. It is the treasure base of the country. It's a, it's a, it's a zone that is so important and fundamental for our collective sufferance and collective existence as a nation of several multiplicities. So that is another. The other zones that I asking for, the southeast zone and perhaps maybe a hard north central zone, should naturally support the south south zone. Deliberately and consciously so because of the strategic importance of that zone in the collective affairs of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know that the president-elect, so, and for his own presidency, having said that, the contribution of the South-South Zone to this presidency is not something you can talk with. Knowing full well that the South-South has been the bedrock of PDP as a political party and as, a, as an opposition party. But in the last election, 2023, the South-South Zone was able to rally around APC. They came second in most of the election, uh, elections at the presidential level. In, in Rivers, APC came first. In Edo, they came second. In Delta, they came second. In uh, Cross River, the same thing. And uh, Aquaibom, despite all the manipulations of the PDP ruling party there and being the home base of the chairman of the presidential campaign of the PDP, APC was still able to score over 150,000 votes. That, to me, is uh, like breaking, you know, breaking the ice. So, APC performance in the South South is quite formidable and contributory to the overall success of the president elect. In the South East, there is some level of conspiracy and contradiction. And how do I mean? You have senators elected from that zone who score as much as 40 something thousand votes, 50 something thousand votes in the senatorial election, an election that was conducted the same day, the same time, the same hour, and the president, their own presidential candidate, is scoring 2,000, uh, in some cases 6,000 in the whole state. That to me was very ridiculous. Something must have happened. He said that there is some level of conspiratorial. Uh, allegiance to some other candidate, uh, protect me, I protect you kind of scenario, or they deliberately worked against the president-elect to ensure that he, do, he couldn't score the same number of votes they scored in their own senatorial contest. So I do not see the South is coming to ask for Senate presidency, the number three position. Well, uh, as, as you know, sorry, uh, Kazim, as you know, Oji, Oji Uzokalu, distinguished senator Oji Uzokalu, uh, who you know, who would be the southeastern uh, candidate, uh, has said, quite frankly, that um, he is seeking the office because Emile Ocon, it is his turn, as he put it. No, uh, no, no. He doesn't, he, doesn't, he, doesn't, doesn't believe in uh, the philosophy of Emile Ocon. If he believed in the philosophy of Emile Ocon, he will have the, the, the creator of a Milokan philosophy, and that is the president elect. So, Oju uh, Zokalu, to all intents and purposes, did not work for us. If Oju Zokalu did work for the president elect, he would not be scoring for something thousand his senatorial election, and his whole presidential candidate, the architect of a Milokan political philosophy, so to speak was scoring 6,000 in the entire state. That was not only ridiculous, it shows that Oji Uzokalu and some other persons did actually work against the aspiration of the president-elect. So coming around, uh, turning around and saying that he wants to become, uh, he wants to be the uh, pres uh, Senate president, is like taking the handshake beyond the elbow. There is nothing bad in aspiration, but it has to be some level of fear in a position. You have to ask yourself, what is my contribution to this whole process that threw up first the president elect? Because you are going to be working with the president in a very robust manner, in an engaging manner, in a collective manner that will help to drive the will of progress of the country. So, an Oji Zokalu who could give a president elect 6,000 votes and he is calling for 70,000 to elect himself as a senator, 
And do you see that that as justiciable? Do you see that as fairness? I I, I think the it, it, it beggars the issue when I see people want to cash in on situation because they feel that oh it, there's a lacuna. No lacuna in this case. Politics of inclusion is what I'm asking for in supporting a South-South presidency and a Senate presidency. You have to balance the power algorithm. I keep saying this every time. And I think the decision to support the South-South will be a conscious and deliberate one to ensure that that, that's, that zone that is the treasure base of the country, that is the resource base of the country, is, is carried along in, 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 uh, given a sense of belonging so that in driving the national affairs, you have a certain president who they can look up to to pursue their aspiration you know, nationwide. Um, as we know, we'll talk about some of the other contestants. We've, we've actually mentioned about two of them, and I said there were seven of them. Um, the other thing, of course, is that you know our function for, for, for balancing, and um, the president-elect and the vice president-elect, uh, as you know, it was something of a sensation when the president-elect chose his uh, uh, running mate on account of them being, both of them being of the same faith. Now, that takes care of number one and number two. Number three, of course, is the Senate president. Now, I've heard people say that don't bring religion into this at all. Just, just look past it. Just, just stay with um, competency and uh, qualification. Um, what would be your commentary on this? Well, thank you very much. I think, uh, speaking very seriously, the election of uh, Ashwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu as the president-elect, knowing full well that it was a same faith ticket, has raised the issue of religion. But it's a sentiment that you cannot run away from when you keep seeing people, hearing people talk about religion every now and then. You cannot, you know, in a country as plural as Nigeria, you must deliberately and consciously do certain things just to make sure that you are able to calm frayed nerves. And in this instance, Bola Ahmed Tinubu being a Muslim, the running, uh, running mate, uh, the vice president and led being a Muslim, will just make it a consideration that a Sunday president should be of other religion. Don't forget that it is not an issue about Christian and Muslim in Nigeria alone. There are those who, who don't practice the, uh, the foreign religions that we practice. There are people who are practicing traditional religion. There are people who are, practice, who are atheists and all that. They also deserve recognition. But essentially, if you take someone from South-South, you will have been balancing a geopolitical equation. Not necessarily that of region, but that of a geopolitics, knowing full well that this particular zone is of utmost importance. That yes, you can attempt to balance your factors, you can attempt to balance all the algorithms, but take into consideration the importance of the geopolitical zone. And in this case, what the East want, what the Southeast people want, is presidency, not Senate president. They have had Senate president on five occasions in the current dispensation of 24 years. They've had it seven times in the history of Nigeria. Uwa for Rizu was one, and Namdi Azikwe was another. Then you have Wabara, you have Ewerem, you have Okadibo, you have I you have no money. So five of them in this dispensation is about time. But the concept of a milokon is should be that of the South South. Such an important geopolitical zone. If there are tremors, if there are political turmoil in South South, you won't be able to get your acts right because that is the treasure base of the country. That is the resource base of the country. So you must continuously and deliberately and consciously factor in their own interests and aspiration in planning or in balancing all the political algorithms. So I don't have a problem with someone saying that it's a local or whatever. What, what did he put on the table? What did he contribute? We have senators, ranking senators from South South who contributed so well, despite the fact that it was more or less like a battle 
getting their uh, getting the their, 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 their election through in their own uh, locality. So I I will make a case for South South today tomorrow, and I will continue to insist that you need to balance power. You need to balance the algorithms of power for you to enjoy some level of stability in dispensing with dividends of democracy. Okay, take Senator Jubrim, for instance. Um, according to news, uh, news reports, um, he has said that, look, I'm the most ranked senator here. Uh, so, uh, not that he needed to go there, but by that, by, uh, by that implication, he is saying that if things are going to go according to the rules, um, you know, rules of engagement, I don't know if they are really rules or if they are sort of um, uh, procedures uh, that have been adopted. But uh, Senator Gibrin says that he's the most uh, ranked uh, senator, and therefore I, I imagine he would be feeling that if he doesn't come my way, I probably have cause for offense. Well, are you talking of Gibrin from the Northwest Zone? Yes. Ah, okay. Now, Northwest Zone will just be finishing as number one position in the country for eight years. They have just been leaving presidency. They shouldn't aspire to be number three almost immediately. I can make do if they, if they aspire for speakership of the assembly of the House of Reps, but not Senate presidency. You see, just the same talking. The North Central Zone can ask for Deputy Senate President, the South ISO can ask for Deputy Speaker, but essentially the South South Zone must be given the recognition and the opportunity to produce the Senate President number three position. The Northwest Zone did so well in supporting the aspiration of Bola Metinibu, no doubt about that. But they are just leaving the seat of government as number one for eight years. So they should allow other zones to test number three position. They can ask for number four position now, which is the Speaker of the House of uh, Reps, or mm -hmm. anything that the party decides to zone then, but not the Senate <laughs> presidency. The South South Zone is eminently qualified and strategically positioned, you know, to enjoy this opportunity of Senate presidency. Knowing full okay. where is strategic importance, knowing full well the caliber and quality of minds in that zone, and knowing full well that they supported, you know, eminently the president-elect. So it, with, with respect to fairness, equity, and justice, if you still count against the Northwest, it will be in support of the South-South. <laughs> Indeed. Well, okay, I take that. But Jibrin himself had said that, um, and I'm quoting him directly in the news, uh, in a news story, uh, there is a need to reward performance. And um, the Northwest deserves to produce the Senate president because we gave the president-elect the highest number of votes. Okay, I'll come back to you for commentary there. Let me take Reverend Dominic, who has come on the line, and hear his commentary. Maybe you can respond to both at the same time. Good morning, Reverend Dominic. Good, good morning to Kathleen. Good morning. Catherine uh, is morning. a brother and a friend I love so much. Okay. I don't know whether you can hear me. If you can hear me, Catherine, I mean, Catherine. Kazim can, can, can hear you. I can okay. hear you. I can hear you. I've said this several times. Elections are over. And for the first time in the history of Nigeria, we have not won this kind of election before that divides Nigeria into pieces in religion, in uh, tribes, in politics. Even in the APC, we have not won this kind of election. And my joy at the same time is that the person who won this election understands what we mean by diversity and teamwork. We shouldn't be talking about now. With us. That how could you, how could he, you know, what, and, and let me try what we're saying. That some people who gave him 95% vote, that he would treat them well, that people who didn't do 5%. And that person referred to South East. And you know how this government has become and the imbalance in it. The government is supposed to know this. What will be in our head now is to put the judge together and share the offices where that every zone will be part of this government for healing, for peace. Number two, when our brothers in the South South, which Kazim is part of, always make some sentiments, they make like threats. 
everybody in Nigeria has power to protest or not to protest. Nobody has all the power in the world. Nobody has the, the authority to government again and it becomes unbalanced. We are causing more trouble to this nation. Can you should hear this? What we need now is a government of national unity. I don't know how people will do it. I know you will do it. But we should not talk about 5%. Let me tell you one thing. I was surprised that Ojikado won his election. He supposed to know better than me. Ojikado winning his election has to a miracle. You know what it means. You know what I mean by that. So you can't blame Ojikado for APC not winning Abia. If Ojikado has no say to it because of the atmosphere we saw ourselves. So Ojikado can say it's a miracle, even though I will not support it because of this. Ojikado still has a case to answer with the EFTC. Courts are finding guilty. That is a, it's a criminal, sorry to say. But speaker says he should go. The man that found him guilty is not supposed to find him guilty. He didn't say he didn't commit the offense. So all the can will not be best. If some is must seek for presidency or Senate, they must bring the best man, not all the Carlo. But the story that the South East did not contribute to uh, a medical uh, election should not come now. The only we problem, the only problem, Reverend, the yes. only problem, Reverend, is that did you just refer to a senator of the Federal Republic as a criminal? So, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm on television. The court has found him guilty. I didn't find him guilty. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not using my words, sir. The uh, court know what I'm saying. The court has found him guilty. He went to Supreme Court and said the man who found him guilty, not because he was not guilty. The court said that the man who judged him was attributed to uh, a big court. That if he got a big court, he has no right to come and finish his, his case in the high court. That was the issue. The court did not say he was not guilty. He said the man who found him guilty. I'm okay. putting the court. Okay, but, so, okay. I, I hear you, say? Reverend, but it's a okay. bit problematic because um, uh, he's in the Senate, not just in the Senate, he's also a chief whip, I believe. And um, they, they wouldn't put a person who they, you know, think of in the terms that you describe, um, you know, in that kind of a position. But I just thought I'd put it out so that we can leave those kind of matters. But thank you very much uh, for calling in uh, Reverend Dominic's opinion. Uh, not that of the program. Um, so, Kazim, uh, there you have it. And uh, Please, let me, we went... let me quickly react. Let me quickly, let me quickly react to him. Uh, I think Dominic is just uh, trying to be clever by half. Because the position I maintain here is not that of threats. It's that of constructive engagement. It's that of collective bargaining. It's that of reason, logic, and the sanctity of political inclusiveness in the affairs of Nigeria. I have not told him that I'm threatening that I was going to blow up the pipelines if they didn't give us any precedence. At least it was, it was just uh, taking, taking the issue beyond limit. The point I was making is very instructive. And that point is that in this 2023 presidential election, the South-South has been the hotbed, the stronghold of the PDP before now. And that the outcome of APC in the South-South is cherry news in view of the kind of support they got coming first in River, in River State, second in most of, most of the other states, uh, with votes that helped to support the election of Ashiwa Jubola Metinobu. Now, talking about the miracle of the Ojus of Kalu uh, emergence as, Senate, as senator, I also see it as a miracle, and that's why I had to interrogate, interrogate the miracle. If he could get himself elected as Senate president, it is natural that he, since it was the same day, the same hour, the same time that the elections were being conducted, his own presidential candidate in his party, APC, should at least have 20 or 30,000 votes. I don't say he should win Abia State for APC. No. But to score 6,000 votes is ridiculous. Something must have happened. He said that there is a conspiracy somewhere, or somebody just deliberately faces, faces his own election and abandon the rest, the other. You see, because the Senate president is going to come from the APC party, APC would naturally look at those who, who put in efforts, who contributed immensely to ensure that they got victory at the, at the center. That is by accession the presidency. Now, uh, uh, he is say, talking about time of healing. Of course, Nigeria, every day is, is, a, is a process of healing. Every day. We put on the process of healing and all that. For those who are, who are wanting to be healed,
they will heal. But for those who are not ready for all of that, no amount of balancing you do that, they will still protest. Even though there was a concept of 95 and 5 percent under Buhari, the South is still play a formidable role in the government of Buhari. They still occupy strategic places of strategic importance. So all of that is just theoretical. In practice, the country is one in terms of representation, in terms of uh, balancing, in terms of uh, power sharing. So I don't have a problem with someone uh, aspiring. I'm only making a case of the South South presidency, uh, Senate presidency on account of our strategic importance in the country, on account of our contribution to national growth and stability, on account of our contribution to the success of APC at the presidential elections. Even mm -hmm. in places where we see a stronghold of PDP, we're able to penetrate there and make substantial showing, which led to the victory of Ashwaji Bola a, 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 a zone that didn't give 10%, 10%, not even 25%, 10%, not one of the states on it, should not naturally be asking for the number three position. Uh, ahead of a zone that gave over 40 percent in all the six states of the south south that's right okay uh mohammed in abuja first of all i thank you for holding on good morning to you sir thank you so much uncle Yori. i appreciate this program today and uh this is quite frankly the most sensible program we're supposed to hold today and i agree totally with uh, my senior brother kazim uh, kazim mr kazim i agree with him Yes, I agree with him totally. All his submissions, I agree. South South, South South has never produced speaker, has never produced. I don't know, maybe when in the 70s, but I don't know from 80s that I know, I've never noticed when South South produced speaker or Senate president. But South East produced up to five Senate presidents as he speaks. In the North, we are just finishing, South, Northwest, they are just finishing the presidency. And that is quite understanding. In the Northeast, in the north, we have two. We have Senate presidents in this north central northeast. We have Senate. We have. We presently the, the Senate president that is serving now is from the north. When we say north, north. When we say south, south. But not produce Senate president twice or, or three times. So it's, it's very, very germane and very, very important for the, for the president elect to consider south, south, because they give him vote, uh, even though it's not up to south, northwest. Still, they are very, very. Every time we are with them, any time politics is played, South South is with the North. Any time, South West, South South is with the North. Even when it, during civil war, South South helps the Nigerian to defeat the South East. So, in fact, South South is very, very strategic to attend the the, the, the position of Senate President now. And then I'm appealing for the Senate President elect to give Lalong SGF to balance the religion issue too. <laughs> please and please that is my appeal. Uh, uh, all you. right nice we, we step okay. okay that that steps out of um, the scope of our conversation here talking about the uh, senate presidency but thank you very much mr mohammed and also for holding on uh kazim i'll just take a break uh let me take a break and we'll come back uh uh you know please stay with us Lagos is the most visited state in Africa as the fifth largest economy on the continent. Covering the state and its government is no me feat, it's a busy beat. We go beyond the curtain of tapes to travel in far into the deep. I want to thank the Lagos state government for the healthcare facility. To bring stories that cut across all spectrums. A greater Lagos shall be ours. We tell you stories that define our collective well-being as Lagosians. I'm Adidoja Salamadini. I live in Lagos, inside Lagos. Join me, Precious Amayo, as I bring you news from the epicenter where it happens and when it happens. Staying on top of every breaking story, minute by minute, right at the hour when the city gets busy and just before it sleeps. We're live from every angle with objective insight and analysis. TVC News, first with breaking news.
Okay, welcome back. And uh, my guest is uh, Kazim Afebwa, former commissioner for information in Edo State, and also a member of the um, Presidential Campaign Council. Thank you once again, uh, Kazim, uh, for being with us. We've been looking at some of the uh, uh, some of the party men uh, because this is an all APC affair. Uh, who would be uh, Senate president? But with a, they're all waiting. Indeed, everybody's waiting to hear what the zoning uh, arrangement shall be. Um, right. Uh, take a name like um, just looking at uh, Senator Ali Ali Ndume, uh, Borono South. I think he also naturally is going to be interested. Uh, he's, I think, second-ranking uh, senator in the Senate. Uh, what would be your commentary on um, his, you know, aspiration in the mix of things such as you've been explaining? Understanding that you've said, and there are many people who also see it like that, that the South-South turn has probably come. But take Aline Dume, uh, Bruno South. Uh, I, I don't think Ali Dume has indicated interest. Uh, that would be unfair to do so, because okay. uh, the, the, the Senate president, the outgoing pre Senate president, uh, Ahmed Lawan, is from Yobi State. Ali Dume is from Bronu. The vice president-elect is from Bronu. He's from <laughs> And so, uh, yeah, so Ali Dume, Ali Dume cannot, uh, you know, be asking for Senate presidency. He's a man of justice. He's a man of fairness. I know that he will support our aspiration in the South-South. He's very blunt. He's one person who speaks truth to power. And uh, I'll be happy to have him support us in the South-South for us to produce a Senate president. Okay. Um, let, let me bring on um, Mr. Lukman calling in from Ghana. Good morning, Mr. Lukman. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Thank you for calling Good in. Good morning, Mr. Kazim. A very sound analyst. I always enjoy your program anywhere you are on the, any station. Thank you for your wisdom. May God continues to bless you. Yes, you are very correct, 100%, that in the South-South, they've done what most of us don't even expect that we can get from the South-South. They fought so hard for us as APC. And uh, I think they deserve it. And uh, I think I listened to Reverend Dominic. If, they are, if you want to claim a position today, you should know how to play the games as well. If APC has lost the election with the way and manner they voted in Southeast, would they be requesting for Senate president today? The Yoruba Southwest, they lost Lagos and uh, Oshu to their own, against their own son, which is the president-elect. Not that they hate Oshu, but they are playing a balanced politics, so that when PDP or APC comes to power, they will be able to have a say. And this should be the way we should be playing politics all over Nigeria. So there is no how people will be saying we should balance. If we want to balance the governance, we should balance the elections too. You cannot play a, a, a dirty game during the election and you will you be forcing people to balance. We are all Nigerians and anywhere it's going. And secondly, Mr. Kazim has said it all. The South South has not been number three before, and this would be unfair to them with the job they have done. So they, we have to give it to them, and it's justified. So the party should look at the South South, and uh, you know, if we can get somebody like uh, Opadio, a very strong man that you know really loves the chair, will be okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lukman, for calling in from Ghana. Okay, Kazim, he actually went as you know Opadio. He mentioned Opadio. You know uh, that, uh, as far as he's concerned. That would be a fine representation from the South South. You agree? Well, well, uh, Gosul Akpabio, for those who know him closely, uh, they speak so well about him. Uh, I'm not close to Gosul Akpabio, but I, at least I can speak to what he has done when he was a governor of Akwaibom. They call him uncommon governor, so a common transformation governor. And uh, like someone like me who, who knows Akwaibom before he became governor in 2007 and thereafter, you always mistake Akwaibom for another city, you know, Uyo, for example, and the state, the kind of infrastructural renewal, the kind of uh, achievements he recorded as a governor for eight years. They are quite transformational and they are quite uncommon 
in, in using using the term that is popularly known with. Uh, a man a man such as that understands the dynamics of politics. He also understands that uh, people matter so much because if you trace his antecedents when Atta, you know, was governor, he was a commissioner for local government at Chieftaincy Affairs. Uh, nobody believed that he could become uh, a governor because he defeated the incumbent governor's own choice of his son-in-law. And that, that means Akwabio has something you know, going for him. Maybe he's very positive towards youths. Maybe he's, uh, he's a team player. Maybe he's inter interactional. He's conversational. He understands the nuances of politics. He understands geopolitical balancing. He understands the dynamics of the system. So such a man... Can we, push, can we push forward by those who, 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 who are, who are his, his adherents, who are his friends, who are his followers? But, and he's also a ranking senator by virtue of the rules of the Senate. But my interest is primarily that the zone should be given the opportunity to produce a Senate president. We have one deputy Senate president who is outgoing now, uh, Senator Mwagege. We have to crown our efforts with Senate presidency. And if a man like uh, Gosul Akpabio present himself, uh, then uh, the zone will rally around him as a ranking senator, and he's most likely going to be the only ranking senator from the entire South South Zone. And so that is a natural, a natural given for him. But mm -hmm. the 10th Senate, uh, we should be able to set agenda for them. We should be able to look at who are we looking at. If it is a Pabio, for example, uh, the, 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 the candidate must be one that understands the dynamics in the country. It must be one that is ready to work you know, constructively with the president-elect when he becomes president, then so that it will not be called a rubber stamp assembly. Because I know that that rubber stamp senate has become almost like a doctrine. But a man like Akpabio, for example, can argue cases, he's a very stubborn person, he can argue cases, he can decide, he can insist that the independence of the senate must be respected, uh, in terms of setting agenda, he, he will take the country as his constituency, not necessarily his zone. Uh, he has friends across all the geopolitical zones and all of that. That's why I said a man like Kundume from uh, Bronu should naturally support South South and by extension support uh, uh, Gosula Pabio. You need people who have the network of influence across the country, who can do a lot of footworks, reaching out to people, reaching out to the power players, reaching out to the ordinary person on the street, so that when they are coming out with laws, those laws will have their own therapeutic effect on the well-being of the entire country. Because as a Senate president, you are just going to be like a moderator, moderator of the entire process of lawmaking. And a man like Akpabio, for those who know him very well, I've read a lot about him, I've seen him as a minister and all that. Even when they were trying to bend his neck on the issue of Niger Delta NDDC, he stood his ground because he said he was driven by his own conviction. A man such as that is better suited than you know, anyone who may just be pursuing a cause for his own interest. But South-South, as a geopolitical zone, is strategically positioned and must be respected and recognized with that position. It's an appeal that we are making. We are not threatening anybody. We are wooing people. We are lobbying people that South-South should be given that recognition. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Emmanuel in Portacourt. Good morning to you, sir. Yes, um, go, good morning. Please go ahead. Yes, my name is um, um, Samuel, not Emmanuel. Oh, I beg your pardon. Samuel. Okay. Please, yes. Please go ahead, Samuel. I, I, I have listened keenly uh, to your guest. He's quite eloquent, and uh, um, I will speak um, in support for the Senate presidency coming from the South South. Um, South South, we've contributed uh, immensely to the uh, development of Nigeria. With regards to uh, oil and gas, we've contributed very, very well. And in addition to that, we've not really had that opportunity to the, the Senate president. So why not give to um, zoning to the South, um, uh, South South particularly? And. He mentioned uh, Apabio. Apabio, well, he is he, a nice person. He has done excellently well as um, governor, and I believe that if he is um, elected as um, senior president, he will do better. He will contribute immensely to the development of Nigeria. 
So I'll, I'll be in support. If I have the opportunity to vote for a person like that, I, I definitely I will. He has done well. Being a, a governor, he did well. And I know he has um, Nigeria at heart. So he's a good person. He will do well. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for calling in. Uh, Samuel, sorry about getting your name wrong the other time. Um, so, Kazim, the 10th Senate uh, is going to be uh, inaugurated, uh, I understand, somewhere around July, uh, June, around June 13, upon a proclamation uh, by the president. But the other thing, uh, the Careful Balancing Act uh, that we're talking about uh, in Nigeria here, first of all, the first two positions have been taken care of, the president and the uh, uh, vice president-elect. Now we're thinking about the... Um, National Assembly, and we're looking at the chairman. But also in that National Assembly is the House of Representatives. And um, with this kind of a balancing act going on here, um, whatever, wherever it is zoned to, is going to affect, won't it, um, where the House of Reps uh, speaker, speakership will be zoned to as well. Yes, uh, it's going to affect, but... Uh I think with the present configuration, uh, going by the fact that the chairman of the party is from the North Central Zone, the Northwest uh, position are more favorably disposed to having a speakership position. Uh, the North Central has the national chairman of the APC. Even if uh, anything will happen that to alter the geopolitics or the political arithmetic of the country, if the chairman of the party remains in North Central Zone, then the speaker will naturally go to Northwest. And uh, the deputy speaker or deputy senate president, depending on how they want to balance the factors, can go to North Central uh, uh, and uh, South and South uh, East. So essentially, uh, uh, if the South-South is given this recognition, which I am making a very strong case for, then with the, mm -hmm. other, the other balances will come, the other factors will come to balance between Deputy Senate President, Deputy Speaker, you know, within South East and North Central. So, but but, but uh, it is good for you to have an inclusion, for you to have geopolitical balancing, for you to also take into consideration the contribution, the importance of these persons, how, of these zones, what they, are, what they are bringing to the table, what they have brought to the table, and what they intend to bring to the table. Okay. Let me bring in um, uh, uh, Atun Ashe, Mr. Atun Ashe in Portaka. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Uncle Yori. How are you? Very well, thank you. Please go ahead now. Yeah. Okay, I think uh, when it comes to the issue of uh, Senate presidency, Akadio is more among the ranking senator. I think uh, he's more qualified. And I think uh, I prefer the Senate presidency go to the South South. That's my contribution. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Short and sharp. <laughs> Uh, short, short, uh, short and sharp there, uh, Kazim. The, the man just is saying everything you said. All, uh, you know, he's rubber stamping it. Yes, we don't want you know, to people say, understand. Oh, be... People understand this. People understand these dynamics, uh, Yori. You think you see the the, the, the the south south, you know, the south south zone came up, you know, with all manners. All manners of seriousness, deploy its own resources, mobilize the electorate, believe in the APC presidency, even when some zones and some persons were walking behind the clock to ensure that APC was disgraced at the election. And uh, the issue of Muslim Muslim ticket, same faith ticket, did it also help matters? Uh, but essentially, with the victory of Ashwa Yubala Tinubu, it's obvious that Nigerians do not depend so much on the issue of religion. What we want is a government of national importance, which the president-elect has enunciated, he has uh, you know, emphasized that there has to be government of national importance and not necessarily government of national unity. You need people who are competent, 
people who have the ability and the capacity to deliver on electoral promises, people who understand the dynamics in the country and they can speak to them, people who also understand the intricate logic of the Nigerian Federation and know how to balance you know, power and deliver on assignments given to them for the overwhelming uh, majority of Nigerians. So, we in this context, and knowing the strategic importance of the South-South region, it's just natural, Yori, that they should please accord us on the recognition of, giving, of serving as Senate President. And the man they have mentioned his name happens to be also a very formidable candidate. Because I remember in the APC's uh, primaries, despite the fact that he has mobilized to contest for president of the country, he stepped down for the Emiloko candidate, Abola Ahmed Tinubu. He stepped down for him and he didn't look back. He didn't look back. He went all the way to ensure that even his state, where the chairman of the PDP campaign comes from Governor Udom, he was still able to make 40% for APC. That is cheering news. That is what I consider their capacity to deliver on assignment. Well, it's different on someone who wants to protect his own interest, Senator, and he will be returning 6,000 or 4,000 to his own all right. presidential let, candidate. Let, and he will turn let, around let, to say he wants to come up with uh, the Senate president. Okay. okay. I think I it's want to like bring in, uh, George, interesting logic uh, beyond the uh, okay, sorry. normal. Uh, George Inekeja has been standing by. Good morning, Mr. George. Good morning, Okiyori, and uh, good morning to Mr. Asegwa. Thank you, Mr. Atibua is somebody much. that I respect a lot because of his um, antecedents. But I'm slightly going to disagree with him this morning. He will permit me to do so. <laughs> please. But you've got to be brief, please. Yes, Uncle Yori, don't forget. The Northern Governor, especially the Northern APC Governor, he brought a brand of integrity to politics in this just concluded election. But for their insistence that presidency must go to the South, Atuaji wouldn't have won that election. That must be understood. And in my view, that integrity that they have introduced into politics, we should try to sustain it. Okay, Mr. George, I, I think that's the crux of it. Forgive me, Mr. George. Uh, I'm going to prevail on you. Please allow it to just be like that, because I think that's the major point. Uh, what, what, what do you think, Kazim? That without the northern governors, you see, Mr. George, no, Mr. George, should know that before now, I have been, I have seen the northern, uh, the northern governors, my heroes. I've written about it. I've commended them. I supported their position, and I continue to celebrate them. I said, for their understanding that it has to be balanced of the political algorithms in the country. The northern 14 northern governors who came together and insisted that power should shift to the city remain my heroes. But we are talking about balanced power. We are not saying that those governors are not recognized. They are recognized. They are respected. They are celebrated. I appreciate them. I, I support them. Different from the PDP where I was coming from, that was championing the cause of Elijah Tikwa Uwaka, even when it was the turn of the South to put a candidate. So, but in this context of balancing of the powers of the country, I'm saying that the not the not uh, east and uh, northwest uh, Jobuka zone can take the speakership position. The north central can take deputy senate president or whatever, since they have chairman. And the southeast can take uh, deputy speaker or deputy senate president, depending on what the party thinks. But I'm saying that for for us, for the APC to even get further roads into the south south Jobuka, which is the stronghold of the PDP. They need to give this position to the uh, this uh, president to the south south geopolitical zone. Okay, uh, Kazim, that's where we're going to have to uh, leave it today. I'm sure there's a lot more, and we could, you know, go on on this uh, analyzing it for the next couple of hours. But I want to thank you, uh, you know, for your analysis and your informed uh, opinions uh, this morning. That will help us uh, probably understand what the stakes are and uh, what the issues really are in filling the all-important position of the number three man, the, senator, uh, the Senate President of the Federal Republic. Thank you very much once again, Kazim Afegwa, former Commissioner for Information in Edo State and member of the uh, APC Presidential Campaign Council. Okay then. So that's our program today. Please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Yori Volare. Bye-bye for now.
to leave this in place. One of your errands is missing. No one will find it. I'm not willing to take that chance. I have a big plan. Man. What do you want? I want a senior position at the bar. If anything happens to me, go through the contents of this envelope and check every single thing. It's done. No one will ever find out the truth. Never miss a moment. Instant breaking news from all over the globe. Live streaming of your favorite programs delivered directly to you. Watch anytime from anywhere on your mobile or smart devices. Download the TVC News app today. When shippers groan under the weight of ceaseless charges that tend to throw them off balance in the sector, Nigerian Shippers Council promptly comes to their rescue. We know that we are achieving something. Today, you now have a regulator. To get justice done without the money for any charges. It's Tidbit, the world's biggest container ship and the first to break the 24,000 TEU mark. The Allah Inland Drive port is born again. Finally, the Eagle has landed. It is initiatives like this that we want to encourage. Join us for a smooth sail on your favorite maritime program, The Shipper. Brought to you by Nigerian Shippers Council, Nigeria's Port Economic Regulator. Keep up with innovative, revealing, and groundbreaking happenings in the world of brands and brand builders in Nigeria and across the globe. Mingle with people and brands that make the cut and the personalities that keep reinventing the trends and traditions in the marketing world. All an exciting one-stop shop for marketing jobs. Marketing Edge on TV. You are always right on time with the right people and movers and shakers of the world of marketing as they share their views and ideas on the business and challenges of advertising, corporate affairs, media strategy, and the unfolding exciting world of digital marketing. Join the trendsetters and key decision makers as they shape opinions and project into the future of the marketing landscape for 30 exhilarating minutes on this channel. Stay ahead, be thrilled to beat, be marketing savvy with Marketing Edge on TV. Marketing Edge on TV, promoting the bright idea. Precious Amayo as I bring you news from the epicenter, where it happens and when it happens. Staying on top of every breaking story, minute by minute, right at the hour when the city gets busy and just before it slips. We're live from every angle with objective insight and analysis. TVC News, first with breaking news. At TVC News, wherever the big news story is happening, We'll get up to break it. TVC News, first with breaking it. Thanks for joining us on TVC Midday News. We begin with this rather sad report from Kaduna State, where no fewer than 10 students have reportedly been kidnapped by yet-to-be-identified persons in Kacha local government area of the state. The victims are said to be students of the Government Day Secondary School, Awan, the Kaduna State Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Arwan, said the incident happened on Monday. He says the exact location of the incident is yet to be ascertained as the detailed reports are still being awaited from security agencies. According to him, the reports will clarify whether the incident occurred within the school premises or elsewhere. 
For more on this development report, our Kaduna State reporter Lupe Asum joins me on the news to bring us up to speed. Lupe, what's the update we have at this uh, time? Have security agencies been able to ascertain where this incident occurred and who the unidentified persons are? All right, uh, we'll definitely get back to our reporter in Kaduna State to bring us up to speed with uh, the situation there. Now away from uh, Plat uh, Kaduna to Plateau State where the State House of Assembly is in a state of uncertainty about who will lead today's seating following the court order reinstating impeached Speaker Nuhu Abok as the Speaker of uh, the House. Punam Joshua brings us up to speed with uh, developments there. The tussle over the rightful speaker of the Plato State House of Assembly is gathering momentum among the 24 lawmakers of the state following a recent court judgment that reinstated Mr. Nuhu Abok as the speaker of the house who was impeached for alleged gross misconduct in October 2021. Justice Nafisa Tumusa of the State High Court passed a judgment on April 3rd on the grounds that the process leading to his impeachment was illegal. This decision has pitched the lawmakers against themselves on where their loyalty lie. The majority leader of the House briefed journalists shortly after the court judgment, where he claimed that the leadership of the House was not aware of the court judgment and was not served with any notice of the development. He argues that Mr. Yakubu Sanda remains their speaker. The House is a respectable institution and an institution that respects the rules of law. And like I said, it is just a rumor for us as members of the Plateau State House Assembly, under the leadership of Right Honorable Yakubo Sanda. If there is any court judgment, I'm sure it will be served to the House. The legal counsel to the impeached speaker while under the summary of what happened in court was the court found, based on our claim, that the first defendant was unjustly and illegally removed as the Speaker of the Plateau State House of Assembly. Give God the glory once again for this victory, uh, for democracy, victory to democracy in Nigeria once again. The lawmakers are expected to resume sitting Tuesday morning as we look forward to seeing who presides over the plenary. For Nom Joshua, TVC News, Joss. Well, our reporter Funom Joshua joins me now to talk to us, uh, uh, bring us updates with regards to what is happening in Plateau. Funom, tell us now what's the situation, the tension, who is... ...about the, the speaker whom the judgment favored yesterday, just a few minutes ago, presided the plenary at the Plato State House of Assembly with uh, nine lawmakers, including him, present at the sitting and... With this development so far, he is now in charge of the House here at the Plateau State House of Assembly. Well, other parties were not uh, in attendance. We learned that they are somewhere, you know, having another meeting in respect to the development. But so far, he was the one uh, knew about decided the uh, plenary a while ago. Did you speak with uh, those present on how they want to move on from here now, now that the speaker has been reinstated and they found out that um, the, those who are opposing to the speaker... Well, we, I spoke with uh, one or two persons from here, the ones that were present here. Uh, they are calling on the other of their colleagues to uh, let go whatever grievances they are holding and come together to to continue the normal uh, 